Alright everyone, welcome back to another portal mapping and modding tutorial. Today I'm going to be making the long-awaited Wheatley style tutorial video, which I said I would make uh, several months earlier and people had been commenting about, so let's just jump right into it. I'm going to start with the basic clean puzzle that we use in most of the tutorials. So. This puzzle, yes, it's nice, a uh, nice clean enrichment center, but let's say you are a moron and want to decorate your facility a bit differently. So, yes, I think we should uh, just get rid of this floor here. We don't really need that. Uh, let's knock out a wall as well. Just get rid of all these things. Uh... Cut up the wall, because uh, I like to avoid actually cutting the tiles and having them just sliced in half like that, uh, so I j I'm just going to make these tiles smaller to have this nice hole in the wall, uh, retexture that appropriately, and yeah, we're just going to bust open these walls here. I'm going to make this wall thinner. Uh, later on, because later on we're going to be actually decorating all the destruction we've created here. So, just cut the bottom part of the swell off and return it to the normal thickness. This, a lot of what I'm doing is actually optional, but it's just the way I like to do it, and that's what these tutorials are all about, showing you how I like to, uh, make these styles. So, what... What I'm going to do here is cut this ceiling up and basically pave the way for making the ceiling destroyed and having all the tiles missing. Because you're not going to have clean destruction where it's just one giant rectangle plucked out of your wall. It's going to be messy. You have to have tiles and framework and visible pieces missing. So, what I want to show you here is actually, like, beginning to mess with the wall's texturing and stuff, because we just took huge rectangles out of our walls and made some holes. Now I'm going to texture this with some behind-the-scenes textures, and I'm going to search plastic, which should get us this rusty-looking uh, texture right next to the normal button, white button base texture. And it looks like that. It's uh, nice rusty square beams, pretty easy to use. Uh, and they look fantastic for destruction like this, like the sides of walls and stuff. They're also a texture that's used a lot in Overgrown. Just thought I'd point that out. Since, uh, I might end up doing a better Overgrown tutorial, since I'm not really happy with the way the one I have on the channel right now turned out. Uh, but... Back on topic, I'm going to be moving these around so I can have framework on all sides of the holes. Since for the first few steps, I'm basically just going to focus on teaching you to decorate these destroyed walls with all the tiles and pieces missing. Get a real Wheatley looking wall here. Just, this isn't really that complicated of a step, what I'm doing right now. I want to break this up into easy to digest, simple steps, so like... If you're a really, really, really new mapper, you can get into making these fancy visual styles rather simply. Since I don't really make these tutorials for advanced mappers, I, I make them for people who want to learn new stuff. <laughs> right, so to start off decorating this destroyed wall, I'm going to search the model Square Beam, and we're going to have to wait for it to load in. These two are the models that load in at first and are actually used at the boss fight of the game. Uh, I'm gonna grab this 2x2 two two one. There's also some other shapes and sizes. This 2x2 two two one right here, uh, and just rotate it. Just position it like that. And basically, what I want to do here is have a nice wall that's broken up. Tons of the regular test chamber tiles are missing, and you can see, like, the framework that holds them together. There's a lot of good assets for this, and if you don't really like the default ones that come in the base game, if you join the Portal Mapping and Modding Discord, which is going to be linked in the description, there are plenty of 
very, very good assets that are made by the community that you can download and use in your maps. I might end up making a tutorial for actually how to install all the custom assets. Uh, yeah. Discord link in the description. So, I have the square beams placed like this. Just, you don't have to... You can do it however you like. I like to uh, only do the edges of it and have the middle kind of broken out. Give it less of a... Basically make it feel like this isn't supposed to be this way. So next off, I'm going to just uh, grab my classic wall texture and make some tiles like this. I'm only going to make them like two units thick so they sit nice and thin on the square beams and look like tiles that were actually attached to the square beams at one point, but are kind of like falling off now due to lack of maintenance. Uh, you can just place them however you like. You can either go full noisy or whatever, make them not that noisy. Honestly, just do whatever you like for this. Uh, I think that was a bit too noisy. Um, yeah, do whatever you like for this. You can also, uh, if you want, you can make some tiles bigger and use different textures for them, like that. Since, you know, the walls aren't just going to be the same tile size. Usually test chambers have varying tile sizes on each wall, and you can kind of demonstrate that in the destruction and make it feel more natural. So, yeah. We have this nice destroyed wall here. And the next few steps are optional. Do, do it if you like to. Do it if you don't want to. Or don't do it if you don't want to. Uh, search up modular, and you're going to want this glue looking. This has tiles of glue. And you're searching up modular. Basically, I'm going to make these really thin. Uh, I'm going to place them in the middle of the square beam, kind of like that. You can place them on top, on bottom, wherever you want to place them. Uh... This is just, I'm just showing you general basic ideas on how to accomplish each different decoration for these types of maps. I'm going to place the glue tiles like that, and place a few around just to give it a feel like something was holding these, and they, like, the walls weren't just there on these square beams, there was like some kind of glue tiles that held them down. I don't know if, like, fire burned them away. I mean, I'm not putting fire in this map, but I have put fire in Wheatley style maps before. Um, next, I'm going to search back panel, and there are quite a few of the same. Ignore the colored ones, those are custom assets from portal mapping and modding. Uh, I'm going to use the one that says no spec in the name, not the, not the regular one, and not the low detail one. I'm going to use no spec, which has better bump maps and looks better in the dark. If you use the one that has specular on it, it's going to look really weird if it happens to be in a dark area. So, use the ones called no spec. And I'm going to place them really thin inside the square beams like that to give it more depth. And I'm going to change this. Once again, we need the one that says no spec, and I'm going to place it right here. Not the cheap one, not the regular one, the no spec. So. Also, make sure you save a lot in Hammer. That's a big tip. Okay, so I've decorated the ceiling with the exact same methodry as the wall, except I haven't added the glue tiles. Just to give it some, some kind of variation. I don't know. No, that's a lie. I was just lazy. <laughs> so, I'm going to show you something very important. When you have small details like this, you're going to want to select them and hit Control t to turn them into a funk detail. Uh, this will speed up your compile times and generally optimize your map better. Funk details cannot seal things from the void, so make sure you keep that in mind. What they do is they don't split vis leaves and make the compiler go a little bit faster. Uh, so, just make sure you put all your small details as funk detail. Hitting ignore group will ignore that they're a funk detail. So now that we have the decorations on the ceiling and on the wall, I am going to be working on the bottomless pit. Now, this is kind of the same thing as decorating the wall, so I can copy some details from it. But, 
it's only the top half of the wall and not the bottom half, since, you know, we have a huge empty chasm that goes into the void below. Somehow kills Shell, even though she's supposed to have long fall boots that can survive any distance. Uh, don't ask me to explain it. Maybe there's goo down there, I don't know. Or maybe it really just is bottomless. Uh, so, just place some decorations like this. Uh, use your square beams like before. Those models are quite useful in a lot of scenarios. Square beams are used in behind the scenes, Wheatley style. Can be used in Portal Stories, Mel, Clean, Overgrown, you name it. So, yeah. Just place some decorations like this. I'm just going to copy and paste that there. Uh, move them down a bit. Uh, I did change the size a bit with that so there wouldn't be any Z fighting. You always want to avoid Z fighting in maps. Sometimes you won't notice it and it slips by. Uh, but if you do see some pretty severe Z fighting on a model, you should try to fix it. Maybe move it one unit to the side if it's two models intersecting. That happens a lot in specifically the overgrown style. In Wheatley style, you're probably only going to get Z-fighting from square beams clipping into walls. Uh, which is easily fixed by making the wall a little bit smaller. And there we go. Just some nice bottomless pit detailing. I'm going to add the glue tiles down here as well. Since the glue tiles is immediate, everybody loves it. Not really. I don't know. Glue tiles down here. And there. Bottomless pit details. Alright. I did a little bit more detailing off camera to this bottomless pit. And as you can see, it's not that complicated. Very simple, basic stuff. I probably will be providing the VMF for this map and the portal mapping and modding Discord for you to download and look at. Just to dissect how exactly it's made and how to do all the details. So... What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a little vacuum tube that kind of just goes through the chamber. Uh, B, B mod model. Uh, this right here, we need the flange model, which I'm just going to place right in that wall right there. Uh, kind of just get it to intersect the wall a bit. If you have a vac tube that's trying to go through a wall and they intersect, you can probably just move around the wall a bit and beat it up bolt fold it in it with wheatley style you don't really have to be like yes a building needs to be built this way to be structurally sound because you know it's chaotic that's the name of the game with the style be chaotic with it so a vac tube through a chamber sure why not just ram it right in there not really sure how it got through there since the corner is intact I guess it was just slid through there like a straw. Um, I'm going to place the other flange up here and position it. I kind of just want like a clean curve between the two, so I'm gonna. Uh, I don't want to do much editing with the ceiling since it's kind of annoying to edit, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to edit the ceiling a bit. I'm just gonna push this back and move the flange so they meet each other correctly. Because I'm probably just going to use one singular curve model between these two vac tubes to make things simple. In your own map, you can make your vac tubes however complicated as you want, but keep in mind that they do get annoying to move after a while and keep curving them and moving them. I've made more complex vac tubes before, and they are quite the frustrating process. The connector and flange models definitely help, since if you don't angle them up right connect correctly, you can just... Put a flange there, and boom, nobody notices. But later on, when I do actually get to how you animate vac tubes, it is going to get quite annoying if you have tons of random weird angles in them. So try to keep them sort of straight, but you can also make them sort of fluid, because making them curvy and twisty is really good looking. And honestly, I think moving vac tubes just adds a lot to your map. Just have all the little cubes flowing through it's just such a great detail that adds a lot of energy to your map. And I bet you're probably a bit confused why I only used the frame model of this vac tube. And it's because of a weird source engine bug where if a model 
has a frame, or it has like a frame that's opaque and a piece of glass that's transparent and it's one model, it won't cast shadows for some reason. So you're going to want to use the separated glass and frame model for the vac tubes. Uh, specifically for the ones inside the chamber, because later on we're going to be casting dynamic shadows into the chamber. Uh, when I deal with, like, the lighting of the test. So, for this vac tube right here, I'm just going to set it to this opaque skin, because I don't really care much about that one. It's outside of the chamber, and doesn't really need to cast shadows. Um, this guy right here, I'm just going to set it to the glass skin, I guess. No, no I'm going to save, and the next thing I'm actually going to work on is, I'm just going to cut a small hole in the wall, and put the monitor in. So, uh... Let me jump to that after saving. Okay, I have my hole cut in the wall. And what I'm going to do is grab an entity and place down a funk underscore instance. Uh, ignore my comically large map list. I have so many unfinished projects. Uh, ignore the modded instances I have. Those are... Uh, just ignore them. So I'm going to go into monitors and just select the little monitor... So we can have wheat thins actually in the chamber. And as you can see, I'm just placing the monitor like this. The monitor is about two Puzzle Maker voxels. Uh, one by two rectangle. Which I think is 128 by 256 units. Not really sure. Uh, I'm an idiot. You can't really expect me to remember all these numbers. I'm just going to name it the uh, Wheatley Monitor. Just name it that, uh. And because Wheatley is a nice actor, we need to give him his Hollywood studio. Uh, just studio. And let's just place it right over here by the elevators, out of the way. And as you can see, Wheatley is a nice Hollywood actor. He has his camera, he has his lights, he has everything in here. And, yeah. By the way, make sure on your entrance trigger to the map you actually uh, turn on the monitor of these triggers. Uh, that's important. So, now that that's out of the way, it's time for the first simple broke down step of the quote unquote hard part, which is the background. I'm not really going to go that in depth on like making it huge and vast. I'm just going to put some simple chambers up here with some basic behind the scenes decoration. Uh, I'm going to start by blocking it out with no draw texture, just the basic geometry of it. I'm not going to do everything at once, and I'm going to keep it broken down as very simple steps for you to just look at. Watch at your own pace. I don't want this video to be, like, too, like, it's going to be a long video, and I want to make sure that you absolutely understand what I'm doing, and just make sure that it's simple for all viewers to understand. So... Uh, right now, I'm just using no draw and making huge blocks that are going to be like the the geometry of the behind the scenes up there. Uh, you can get creative with angles and stuff, which are harder to decorate, but really cool if you pull off. I'm just going to do some basic rectangles. Uh, feel free to get creative and do whatever you want with this. Uh, some huge rectangles up here. I like that. That looks great. So... You can also, like, move it around if you want. I'm going to put a uh, background right here. Not really background, but basically covering up the elevators. Because the elevators are made of no draw, and no draw doesn't actually render in-game. It renders as weird void, so uh, you want to cover up anything that... You don't want the player to be able to see no draw, but it's good for mapping stuff out in Hammer, like, basically geometry. Uh, I'm going to search up plastic again and use this which is our basic behind the scenes texture which is used in many 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 different things related to behind the scenes uh and i can cut it up and use my no spec tiles right there and basically just cut these giant blocks into pieces and give them some basic texturing like this yellow plastic right there uh get creative with it Do 
uh, place textures, get creative, have fun. Alright, I finished uh, cutting up all of these blocks and texturing them. I have something that I quite like up here. Going on. Uh, over here I have some, like, some yellow back panels and stuff. And I'm actually going to place these square beams from before. Uh, going down to the singular square beam. And this is a completely optional decorational step. But on all the back panel textures, I'm going to place square beam frameworks on them. Since, like, they fit. They look really good. Uh, just slap them on like that. Copy and paste and move them all around. Basically just getting a nice framework built up that adds to the detail of it. Now, for these big yellow ones, I use the bigger one obviously, but I set the skin to the blue skin. Uh, the back panels actually have a regular skin, a rusted skin, and a painted blue skin. And for all the yellow back panels, I actually like to use the blue skin, since it looks fairly nice. Once again, it's up to you, whatever you want to do with this. Uh, I'm just going to place these back panels around on every single framework texture, and skip ahead. As you can see, I have back panels on every single... Like, back panels and frameworks. But they're all happy couples living happily ever after in this decaying, wheatleyified facility. So, now that that's done... I'm going to actually turn this, and I'm going to search up ARM. Searching up MAT, MAT, will yield a hidden model that's actually these in their full resolution. One single row, 4x4 four four of them. I'm just going to use the half-res versions, though, since these aren't really up close to the player. Like, they're not that high-poly of a model, and look fairly fine, oh, just looking at them from a distance. You don't really need to have the high-res versions if you're just looking at them up from a chamber and not really getting up close and personal. Kind of see some verticals, on, vertices on them, uh, whatever. Uh, I'm going to place these all around the behind-the-scenes decorational, as decorations. Also, fix this Z fighting, as I said earlier. Sometimes you don't always catch those, and you can just fix them easy like that. So... I'm gonna just take these arm models, like, place them all around. Alright, so now I have all of the arm models placed everywhere, and this is already starting to shape up to look really good. You can actually look from the chamber which, which angles the player will see. I'm kind of just decorating unconditionally right now, not really caring about what the player sees, but what I'm gonna work on now is getting some nice vac tubes up. So. Basically, I'm just going to get a nice connector here. The model is called Entrance, Vac Entrance something. Just search up Entrance to find it. It'll be by the... And... Uh, okay, so position it like this. Try to get everything lined up. I'm not that great at lining up models, and I get the Vac Tube models messed up all the time. So, I'm going to just place them like this. Uh, make sure everything is perfectly lined up. You obviously don't have to line them up perfectly, but for the sake of being easy when I animate these later using hammer add-ons, I'm just going to get them lined up. And I'm going to place this right here, and what you're going to want to do is cut a hole into this wall using a uh, little tool that slices brushes in half. I don't know. Okay, so slice that, and you're going to want to cut an octagon-shaped hole. A square hole can work if you get the size right, but octagon is usually going to be better. And yeah, I'm just going to make this clip a bit faster. Time lapse. So, now that I actually have the hole cut, I'm just going to intrude it into the wall a bit. Or the ceiling. And yeah. Just push it up a bit, make a little hole, and texture all of it with Tools Black No Portal, which you can get by searching black. The reason I use No Portal is because the regular default Tools Black can, you can fire portals onto it. Uh, great one, Valve. So, just use the No Portal variant, push it up a bit. Don't use the No Fog variant, though. And, yeah. I'm going to place a few vac tubes around, and they'll be animated later on. 
So, now that I've got a few vac tubes placed around, I'm going to decorate the behind the scenes a bit more. I'm going to place a prop static and try to find a very specific set of two models, which are very annoying to find, actually. These are pretty good, I guess, but not the ones I'm looking for. Uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes models that you can use to decorate that are all pretty good, but not just because it's the one that I'm looking for right now. Okay, yeah. So, this thing, uh, right here, and its sibling, which looks like that. These are canonically the backs of the energy pellet catcher and launcher, which is why we should place them completely and utterly randomly on every single building we can find. Because that's what a test chamber looks like, you know? Basically, we're pretending that the tests inside these blocks are horrifying creations of people who used Bmod and just figured out what energy pellets are. So, we're just going to place them completely randomly right here. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm going to see if I can fit one in up here. The catcher is much easier to position and get everywhere in this cramped behind the scenes style. And much bigger, more open spaces you can fit a few launchers in. Uh, there's various props you can use for decoration. Uh... This one right here I like a lot, but I'm not going to be using it right now. The the duct models, the sussy vents, the sussy bucket imposter vents are pretty good. That thing's good too, the cable. Uh, walkways are pretty nice. There's all around a really a lot of different models that you can use to decorate. Uh, they have different contexts too, like the pitch black ones for, for large vista type areas. There's vac tubes, walkways, um, all kinds of stuff. So, I'm actually going to be looking at these ducts for some decoration. we going to add some sussy bits. And, let's see if maybe it would look good right here. Like, I'm not doing it specifically because it looks good or adds anything here. I just really want to show, like, all the different types of decoration you could put in your map. Such as, you know, the imposter vent from the hit game Among Us. Yeah, I'm really sorry for that Among Us joke. Well, not really, I'm not sorry at all. Anyways, I'm just gonna try playing around with these vents a bit. See, maybe I could get it visible from the actual chamber itself instead of having these random vents that the player can't even see. Which, I mean... You shouldn't detail things if the player's never going to see them. Unless you're crazy and want to recreate the entire enrichment center the size of Michigan. With every single detail. And just have the player never see it. Which seems like a great use of your time. So, I'm going to... Just kind of get this vent right here. I want one that like kind of goes up and angles outward. Go directly up into the wall and stuff. Just upwards, since the player's going to be able to see it if it's vertical right here. I think from the ledge that has the cube on it. Because I'm just going to move this out of the way so I can get my vent in. Because how else are the, the Among Us is going to... Is the plural of Among Us Among Us or Among I? I don't know. Uh, how else are the Among I going to get from test chamber to test chamber, huh? That's why we place vents in the behind the scenes. I think. Yeah, this joke is overused. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna try not to make everything clip into everything, you know, make it so all the models don't touch each other very much, since that usually looks a bit awkward. If you can manage to make a cramped behind the scenes with like extremely over detailing, uh, and not have a single prop clipping or touching each other, then good job. Very good job. Uh, usually having 
floating props, clipping props is just kind of what people do. Valve themselves has several vac tubes that straight up just clip through walls, so, I mean, if you can hide it, it's fine. I've gone ahead and used everything that I've already explained to decorate a few more areas around here. What I'm going to do now is kind of like make some stuff up here and start to seal the top half of the map up. You know, literally up since it's the top half of the map. So, basically what I'm doing here is making big brushes that are going to serve as the top area. Now, I'm going to be honest, players generally don't look up. I don't know why, but a lot of players just really don't look up. It's a bad habit, I guess, since the puzzle is supposed to be all around you. A lot of players do look down, because, you know, there's a fun bottomless pit to look at. So, I'm just going to cover this up. We've already done plenty of detailing for the... About, maybe, quarter of the player base that does look up for a little bit. They're going to be like, oh, cool, time to go back to the actual puzzle. Since I am hammerizing right now what is to be considered the most difficult puzzle anyone in the portal mapping and modding server has ever created. Actually, possibly the hardest puzzle ever that could be created. So I'm just going to place Tools Black up here, which is going to show up as just Foggy Void when we actually place fog in the map. So what we have up here is some decorated areas, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, and just use Tools Black to cover everything up. Basically, it's just going to look like the fog covers up an ever-expansing void that is soon to consume your soul. Did I do the edgy right? Anyways, just going to cover this up. Texture of Tools Black. Which, according to Hot Topic, is the best color ever. And that looks pretty nice. This looks like a void. And I'm going to save, because saving is critical in a hammer. And I am next going to focus on the bottomless pit. Save. So, I've got some basic geometry down here that's going to serve as the behind the scenes for our bottomless pit. I'm going to be honest, it's just like making all the behind-the-scenes I've shown you before, except you can get away with a bit less detail, and mostly you're going to want to make it gray. Plus, instead of being short little buildings, it's going to be tall buildings. Tall and skinny, like this. Basically, these buildings are playing basketball, so they need to be tall and skinny. Just like the cliche. And you're going to want to make sure that all of these are textured properly so that no no draw can be visible to the player. Even if you jump down the pit, you don't want no draw to be visible to the player. Why? Well, ask the aperture tag developers what the com modding community like in general thinks of their mod. Fun fact, if you jump down in some of the stage levels and look up, you can actually see that the bottom side of the grate is textured with no draw and you can see right through it. Which is kind of an oversight, but not as bad as the other visible no draws that are throughout the mod. Anyways, enough uh, talking about how Aperture Tag is the bane of my existence, and I have irrational anger over a portal mod that people put genuine effort into, it, probably because I don't like that it costs money. So, I am going to texture the bottom of these buildings, and, oh wait, not really buildings, but... Floating test chambers in the magic aperture void. Texture them like that, and I'm going to just basically bring these tools black brushes that I bet you barely noticed. And yeah, use the vertical editing tool, vertex edit, I think it's called, to bring these around. And just give it a nice floor. So, next I'm going to save. Always save. And I'm going to place some arms around here. Just give it some basic detailing so you know what's up. Uh, same thing as before, just placing arms around here. Giving, giving, or giving it some 
Man, I can't even talk today. Giving it some nice details, and... Yeah. You're also going to want to use this texture called Beam. It's this yellow metal solid steel. To make it seem a bit less uh, magic and floaty, and a bit more... Yes, it is being held by solid steel. So, you're going to place this. I mean, if you want... You don't really have to, and it'll look basically just as good. But it's all, all about the little details, you know? So, I'm gonna get this beam, and... These beams are generally in behind the scenes, like... Near these big, tall, gray things. Or just free-floating to give the place a sense of structure. And, yeah. Just move them up like that. Uh, I guess I can just place them in here. Oh, that's um, an intersection, all right. That'll be fine. I'm just going to keep it like that. So, down here, I'm going to make one that's sideways, basically turn it into an H shape. What? Oh. Yeah, I want to turn this into an H shape, and give it a model that is called joint. You rotate the texture, and there's a model you use prop static for called joint that you place in between these. Uh, I'm going to make this touch the wall, by the way. The joint model basically goes in between beams. It, it's used when a beam touches a wall. Uh, search and joint. Uh, you can use whichever of the three. I'm using this one right here, and basically just gonna place this around. Uh, I do have this method where you can turn the beams themselves into an H shape. Clipping tool will make them a funk detail and whatever. But I'm not gonna go in depth in that. Uh, I plan on, in the future, making, uh, like an hour-long video. That's just gonna go through the nitty-gritty of all the behind-the-scenes styles, like Office, huge, open, vast behind-the-scenes, Portal 1 style, you know, all that. So, I have my pillar joints in place, and it looks good. So we have a nice H shape. Uh, I'm gonna try and look for a very specific model. I think I saw it earlier in recording. Let me try to find it again. This model is basically like Okay, here, here they are. So, this one right here looks pretty good. It has different skins. I'm just going to use the basic default settings blue one. And I'm going to place it like this. Maybe rotate it a bit. Yeah, that looks good. So now we have a nice blue beam thing right there. And yeah, that looks great. So, I did a basic amount of extra detailing and whatnot, so here we go. Next off, I'm going to grab some triggers, the trigger texture, and if you don't know how to make these, you control T just as if you're making a funk detail, but you're going to change the settings a bit. And before I get into that, though, I'm going to just put it right here so you die immediately if you try to jump off the map. So I'm going to turn it into a trigger underscore hurt. If you're using hammer add-ons, it should already be default settings, but you're basically going to turn the damage up to like 10,000 or whatever, make the player instantly die. I'm going to set a different trigger, and I'm going to make it trigger portal cleanser. This is the same entity that is used for fizzlers, but we're going to make it so it is not visible. Uh, I also make sure that physics objects is selected in the flags. So, make it so it's invisible fizzler, basically. And this is going to serve as our kill trigger for anything that falls off. Next, I'm going to just place a few overlays around as extra detailing. You know, just nice overlays. Do whatever with these. Searching AA or AB will give you these nice little overlays. Ignore the missing texture. My textures are being missing. Okay, so. I'm just gonna search Aperture. 
I don't know which one it is because Hammer likes to not load in textures. Uh, yeah, this this one looks about right. Doesn't look very good on the grays. Uh, I guess I'll just place it up here. Uh, I'm not really sure. I thought it was a more white color, but I guess it's gray. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know it's wrong, I know it's wrong. So, this must be the uh, main menu one or something. Uh, what's this? Okay, yeah, this is the right one. So, this one is a really good detail. It's big, bold, aperture logo. Just place it wherever you want, I guess. So, let's just place this right here. Rotate it up a bit. Let me place this one. Alright, just rotate it. Uh, these sideways aperture logos, I really, really love them in placing them in bottomless pits. Because they just make the pit seem taller than it is. I don't know. Kind of just be like... They just give a sense of scale, I guess. It doesn't really make sense, but... I mean, you probably, probably just think I'm a schizo right now, but... You know... Just place sideways aperture logos. Just do it. Place these in the bottomless pit, and you're golden. So, oh yeah, also, I'm pretty sure Valve uses these sideways aperture logos a lot in the official Wheatley maps, so... I have a good source to back me up here. Save, and yeah, the bottomless pit is done. Okay, so... For what I'm about to do, you're going to want to download the mod called Hammer Add-ons, which lets you animate vac tubes a lot easier. Uh, I'm probably going to make a tutorial on downloading it, even though it's really easy. You just download the installer by Darville, and load it up, press the number for Portal 2, and that's it. Uh, the download is scattered across the community. There's one on GitHub, I think. So... You're just going to place the VacTube start from Hammer Add-ons. And, believe me, uh, animating VacTubes using Hammer Add-ons is extremely simple. And the application is for a free download on GitHub, which I really love. So, to get all of them in the right place, I guess I'm just going to copy and paste all of my VacTube parts and convert them into the entity called Comp. Vactube Junction, I think. Yeah. Uh, and then switch it to the curve size. Um, it's going the wrong way. Okay, I I just pulled an idiot, and I'm, I'm going to pay the price for it. So, I'm just going to place these arrows going in the correct direction. If you don't, it's probably going to scream a compile error at you. So, just make them all go away from the start entity. All the arrows need to go the same direction through this tube. This is a fairly simple process. Very easy. Like, having animated vac tubes in your map just gives such a... Just adds to it a lot, and it's a rather simple process as well. So, I... I genuinely just recommend placing vac tubes in every behind the scenes map. Uh, Wheatley maps too. Since, you know, it's right in your face, big, cool, moving tubes with objects in it. Crazy. Add to the sci fi ness of Aperture a lot. Unless you just. Unless you're a Portal 1 diehard extremist, even though that has vac tubes too, but don't tell anyone that. Uh. It's going to make this area a bit bigger, give myself more space to work. And I'm going to add the VacTube end entity, which is from Hammer Add-ons. And, yeah, right there. Making VacTubes is very simple. And, yeah, that's actually all you need to do to make the VacTube path. Now what you're going to do is actually set the objects that are going to be in the vac tube, which is comp vac tube object for the entity. And it's a lot like a prop static. You just open it up and search through models. I want to find a nice little cube to go through my vac tube. 
Uh, what's that? That's weird. Um, can't really find the. Try searching vac. Yeah, here we go. Nice little cube to put in the vac tube. And you don't have to use vac tube models either. I can use some funny CSGO barrels. Yeah, I think I'm gonna place a nice CSGO barrel in here. Search up barrel and Yeah, this 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 looks cool. This nice red flammable flammable barrel. Uh I toss that into the vac tubes as well. I think CSGO also has a radiation barrel with some nuclear waste in it. That's probably, yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, there's different skins for it. Um, yeah, this is the one I like. Okay. Honestly, I would recommend you place these in some random no-draw box in the middle of nowhere, because I'm lazy and don't really want to go make one of those. I'm just going to hide them from view of the player. So, I mean, if you were to play this map in no clip, you would see that the items are just right out of view. But, I mean, it's fine, since you can hide things where the player cannot see them. So, now, animated vac tubes. So, off camera, I went and animated the other vac tube that's in the map with the paths. Uh, rather simple process. You should already get exactly what I did here. So, I'm... This map is almost done. All it's missing is, like, lighting, some basic effects, whatnot. And first basic effect I'm going to do is fog. What? Oh, I don't know what that is. So, just going to grab an instance. Usually I use custom fog in my maps, but for today I'm just going to use global ints. I can hear triplets from the portal mapping and modding Discord like, screaming in joy right now. I'm just gonna use this Global Ants, which... Most, I, don't tell anyone about it, I already customized a lot of these anyways. So, I'm just gonna... Name this, and use the Logic Auto to turn it on. I'm gonna use Bottomless Pit. That seems good, since, you know, um... We have a Bottomless Pit here. I think... On the Discord pinned somewhere is some chart that has every single fog in it. Next, I'm going to work on lighting. Alright, the next thing I'm going to be working on is the lighting of the puzzle, since right now, if you were to compile it, it would be really, really dark, like a most recent map where the user hasn't figured out what a light strip is yet. So, first, I'm going to be placing an NV projected texture, which is the dynamic light of the map. You can only have one of these active at a time, so you're going to have to have the trigger at the beginning of the map turn it on. This is because the elevator already has one that is activated, and it will cancel out the one inside your test chamber. So, make sure that you give the projected texture a name, and make the trigger at the beginning of the map actually turn it on. Another thing you're going to want to do is change the FOV in settings so that it properly lights things up. Uh, I'm probably not going to go too in-depth on to actually making it work and light things up. Like, you know, like, getting it the proper angling and stuff, since it's just a very simple map. Uh, basically, what this is going to do is cast dynamic shadows into your puzzle. And I recommend placing it behind things like a vac tube, so you have moving shadows from each object in the vac tube. This can be used to highlight the, where the exit of your map is by having the dynamic shadows casted onto your exit to catch the player's eye. But for right now, I'm just going to center it perfectly right here and cast them directly down. I'm going to give it a name. And, yeah. Projected textures. So, next what I'm going to do is grab a light spot. Now, I'm doing very, very, very basic lighting for your chamber. When you make your chamber, you're going to want to place light strips, uh... Maybe an observation room for, like, better lighting. But for this, I'm just going to place a warm light spot by the in exit and a cold one by the entrance. Really ain't nothing that spectacular or unique. Just very basic lighting. Because I don't need to really get fancy and in-depth with this tutorial. I'm already pushing the hour mark here. 
uh, I've actually been working on this map for about three hours and I've only recorded a third of it. Um, so yeah, I don't really want to get more in depth with that. I am going to be placing some funk instances with the default cage light for behind the scenes in the lights folder. I actually have modified my own to include sprites, but um, yours won't include that by default. It shouldn't matter though. I just did that to have fancy bloom effects. So yeah, just place these light strip instances or cage light instances all over the place. Uh, and it'll look great. These are basically your default behind the scenes lighting. You can place uh, models like cables and stuff going into them. I haven't actually added any keyframe ropes, which are a pretty good detail that you should use. Because I feel like it's already crowded enough in the behind the scenes areas. And yeah, just keep placing a few of the, those things in different places to make it so your behind the scenes decorations are actually visible. Mm -hmm. Can place one up here right by this uh, totally normal pellet catcher. And yeah, basically just do that in your behind the scenes areas. Next, I'm going to work on a little bit of audio design here. Uh, what I'm going to do is be placing an NV soundscape right by the entrance. And I'm going to keep it set to nothing. This is because uh, the elevator has its own soundscapes and you'll get the elevator noises in the middle of your puzzle if you don't place a nothing soundscape right here. So I recommend doing that. And over here I'm going to be placing a soundscape. There are a lot of soundscapes you can use for your chamber. Uh, some of them have vacuum noises, some have water noises, so keep in mind which one you're doing. I think the Valve Developer Community has a video that uh, has every single soundscape listed out and what it sounds like. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think I'm just going to go watch that video real quick and pick whichever one I feel is best. Alright, we're back. And I have selected a soundscape that I feel is going to be pretty good. Catch Chamber 1, which is... It has a vac tube. And it's for a test chamber. So I'm just going to place this so it covers the whole map a bit. Um, it's probably not going to be very loud at all. And I still think soundscapes are pretty important to have in your test chamber. I have not really experimented with them much or used them much. But I do know that the nothing soundscape is really important to not have all the weird elevator noises in your chamber. So I have my trigger set up to activate everything. Uh... Oh yeah, next, I'm going to be adding music, just, I'm just going to place it in a simple ambient generic and try to get some good sounding music in here. Uh, search music and scroll all the way down. There's a lot of weird musics to choose from. I want one that's just kind of basic, sounds like a regular weekly chamber. Let's see that. Should be good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I'm gonna make it play everywhere. Not, it needs to loop. And I'm just gonna give it basic chamber music name and turn it on with this trigger. Now, next step, completely optional, but I kind of want it to become quieter when you go through the exit door. So I'm gonna find the trigger in this big mess here. Uh, there it is. And just set the volume to 5 when you go through the trigger. That should be good. Set the volume to 5, and there we go. Now I'm going to run the map. And 
As you can see, it looks great. We have our music, and we don't have the weird elevator soundscapes. Plus, we have our friend Wheat Thins over there. Nice bottomless pit. There's the dynamic shadows from the projected texture. Not exactly where I wanted them to be cast, but it's fine. You can also see moving objects in the vacuum tubes, and it looks great. I'd recommend going for brighter overall lighting, but this is just a simple tutorial, so it's fine. That's it for the tutorial. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you thought I didn't explain something, need to explain something properly, uh, maybe you didn't quite understand something, you can always join the Portal Mapping and Modding Discord and ping me, and I can explain it much better to you in person. Uh, just ping War the Nuclear Shell. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one in maybe like five months or something, whenever I feel like it. <laughs> Bye.